Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Nick at NJ's Bricks, and we've got a fun one for you today. We're going to discuss the 10 most satisfying LEGO sets that I have ever built, most or all of which have been featured on this channel. Please like and subscribe down below if you enjoyed this content, guys. I really appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. Let's get into some honorable mentions now before... We start naming sets. I'll just let you know, satisfying can mean a number of things. It could mean I was really pleased with the build process, or I really liked the way the set turned out in the end when it was completed. And that first set in the honorable mentions is the Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, overall, there's definitely some aspects of this set I really didn't enjoy building, including all the innards of the television. But you cannot deny the mechanisms in this set are extremely satisfying, namely in the console itself, when you insert the brick built cartridge and you click it down into the console, that mechanism feels almost exactly identical to the actual NES. The feedback you get when you click that cartridge down into the console and you know you're ready to play, they did an incredible job at recreating the feeling that you get and the tactile feedback you get when doing that. And for that reason, this makes the honorable mentions list also, in my honorable mentions list, Back to the Future Time Machine, the newer version of the DeLorean, set 10300, and the biggest reason that this set makes the honorable mentions is all the shiny silver pieces. I love the shiny silver pieces, the shiny gold pieces. If you've seen my other videos, you've seen my shorts, I love that paint. It pops so well. I think it works so well on the DeLorean, including some cool minifigures in that one. Really enjoyed it. Assembly Square. That is one of the cooler modular buildings that I have built. I love all the different shops and features. I love how the building in the middle sets back a bit. So you have that courtyard space with the fountain. Really unique. And lastly in the honorable mentions is set 21303. It is Wally, -E, of course, from the film from Pixar. And this is one of my favorites just because it's really satisfying to look at. It looks just like Wally. -E. Lego lends itself really well to the character. The way that they've built the eyes on this really portray the expressiveness that you get out of those. Great character design by the Pixar team and a very cool Lego set. That is the end of the honorable mentions here for the top 10 most satisfying Lego sets that I have ever built. Moving on to number 10 in the list, it is 10497 Galaxy Explorer. The reason for this set making the list here, cracking in at number 10, is not just nostalgia factor, but it was a good build. It was an entertaining build that had interesting techniques they used to achieve the different angles. You see on this set, it's a modern take, a great recreation on a classic Lego theme and a classic Lego type ship, and I really enjoyed building it. I love the way that it looks and the way it makes you feel that nostalgia, and for that reason, number 10, most satisfying sets, Galaxy Explorer. On to number 9, we're featuring another ship here. This is 76247, the Avengers Quinjet. This was a really enjoyable one to build. I think the fidelity to the jet from that first Avengers movie is quite good, and the different techniques that they use to help you achieve the different angles that are featured on this ship were very interesting to me. It was fun to build. It wasn't too cumbersome. It comes with a nice assortment of minifigures from that movie, and for that reason, it's one of the more fun ships that I built across the different Marvel Star Wars lines. Moving down the list to number eight from Lego Star Wars, this is BB-8, set 75187. I got to admit, some of the things that I don't like about other sets, like the helmets, do show up in the building of this set, namely using a lot of little tiny pieces to get this spherical figure as accurately as possible. I don't enjoy that aspect, however, this set makes most satisfying because the fidelity to the actual character is so great. It looks so good, just like BB-8. One of the best things about BB-8 on screen is the way he is able to portray so much expressiveness by moving the head around that body. And that is an actual practical effect the way that they built that robot. A lot of the shots in the film are an actual bot that they built that can move and roll around. Lego was able to recreate the movement of that head very well in this set. You can turn one of his sides and that spins his head around. His head can also move side to side. That amount of movement allows you to give BB-8 the expressiveness that you see on screen and for that reason he makes number eight on my most satisfying sets that I have built. Number seven in the top ten list of the most satisfying sets I have built is the Black Pearl set 4184. Old enough to have just a four-digit set 
number. It is from 2011. The reasons this are most satisfying are not necessarily due to complexity of build or the awesomeness of the parts usage or the different techniques that they use, but just the cohesion of the whole project and the nostalgia that it makes you feel. It's very throwback and reminiscent to some of the original Pirates builds and the old Pirate ships that I remember as a kid. I think it's a faithful recreation of those while adapting well to the film. The minifigure assortment that comes with this set allows you to bring a real scene to life on the ship, and I think the Black Pearl is one of the coolest and most satisfying sets I have done on the channel. Moving on to set number six, it is a type of set that I generally deride and do not enjoy building, and there were certainly many aspects of this one I did not, but it has to make the list, and that is the Perseverance Rover set 42158. This is a Technic set not my favorite to build. All the little pins and parts and sliding pieces onto other pieces, not something that I enjoy from Lego. I like to stick the bricks together, but the Perseverance Rover has to make the list because it looks so cool and the different mechanisms that are built into the Perseverance to make all the parts and pieces move around and work the way that they do are extremely impressive. If you have to build a technical set but you don't like doing it, do the Rover. Well worth your money. I enjoyed this set a lot. We are here finally into the top five most satisfying Lego sets I have ever built. And coming in at number five on the list is a modular building, the Jazz Club set 10312. Now generally I've enjoyed building all the different modular buildings. The reason the Jazz Club specifically is making the list here at number five is the different angularities that you see in the interior of the build. The way that the floor is inlaid and how the stage is diagonal to the rest of the room creates a dynamicism in the environment that you don't get from a very straightforward boxy rectangular room. It adds a lot of movement to the room and a lot of character that you don't always see. You get the same sort of angularity out front here with the marquee build uh, being at an angle to the front of the building. The fact that there's pizza shop in there too. Who doesn't like to get a little pizza and a night of jazz? Sounds like a great night to me. So for that reason, I really enjoyed the Jazz Club among all the different modulars that I built. The Jazz Club was my favorite. So the Jazz Club coming in at number five on the list. Number four on the list is a set I built very recently and is actually one of the simpler sets that I have built. This is the Polaroid camera 21345 and there's a couple reasons. The build on this one is pretty fun actually. While it's doesn't it's not going to take you very long. Sit down with a movie. You get a movie an hour 40, 2 hours. Sit down with this set with a movie. You'll be able to get this one put together by the time that it's over. It's going to be a good time. There's a few different build processes in this one that I like. Some techniques that they use to create different angularities so that the shape of the camera would match up to real life fidelity. But the real money maker is the mechanism here. Just like when I was talking about the NES, I should say this set comes with these little plastic printed like Polaroid picture type pieces. Once you've built it and you've had the mechanism in place, you slide one of those inside of the slot on the front of the camera until it clicks in place. Then when you pull the shutter button, it click and the photo pops out of the front of the camera. It is extremely satisfying to do. I sat there for like 10 minutes just putting it in there, click into place and then take the picture and it slides out. The set comes with three different variant photos that you can use, which is super cool. The, some of the more unique Lego pieces ever, these printed photo pieces, but they go so well and the set works so well. It's very simple, but very, very satisfying. If you're an AFOL, you definitely should pick this set up and click and snap those photos and you will be very satisfied. Number four on the list, the Polaroid camera. Getting down towards the end of the list here, coming in at number three, it is Rivendell. Set number 10316 from the LEGO Lord of the Rings line. I believe this is the biggest set I've ever built. It's about 6,000 pieces off the top of my head. Uh, it comes with like 20 minifigures and it was a real... I don't want to say slog because that's not what I felt like. It's just a very long build process, but it is all very, very well worth it because the finished product on Rivendell is one of the best looking display sets they've ever built. It is quite large, so you may find trouble having space to display this one, but if you do, you'll definitely get comments on it from your guests. Very impressive, especially once you get all the minis laid out there. And for that reason, Rivendell coming in at three on the list of most satisfying Lego sets I have ever built. Number two on the list is the Hogwarts Castle and Grounds set 76419. It makes a list for a lot of the same reasons as Rivendell. It's an extremely striking piece from a display standpoint. 
Even though it's so small in scale, the level of detailing on the set is impressive. There are so many Easter eggs that reference different books and times of the castle throughout the Harry Potter series. It solves the problem of wanting to have a really striking and detailed display piece without taking up a ton of space. Reality is, is most people either live in apartments or maybe they have kids in their home or they just don't have the space for a number of reasons to display sets on the scale of a Rivendell or a UCS Millennium Falcon or Star Destroyer but they still want really striking and nice looking display sets that have a lot of detail and this absolutely fits the bill. It's kind of in the same vein as these newer Star Wars ships they have that are like micro scale ships that pack a lot of detail but don't take up too much space. I think it's a great middle ground, especially on prices while not being the hundreds and hundreds of dollars you get for a UCS set. For that reason, the Hogwarts Castle and Grounds coming in at number two. We've gone to number one here on the most satisfying Lego sets I've ever built. You've seen some on the list because they were fun to build, some on the list because I was really pleased with the way they turned out in the end and how they display, some are on here because they have great mechanisms or play features. This last set has a little bit of everything, kinda minus the part about being fun to build, and that is the Loop Coaster 10303. The Loop Coaster honestly was kind of a frustrating build. I didn't want to call Rivendell a slog. Loop Coaster was kind of a slog. Building all these pillars, super repetitive. You have to make sure everything is really clicked in, real tight, real stable, because the working mechanism of this thing actually operating, it requires precision. You can't just haphazardly slap this together and expect it to run. It will not. The big pillar that goes up the middle of the coaster, which drags the cart up, that pulls the carts with the riders, up the roller coaster is really, I say fiddly, really peculiar. It's really like you have to have it clicked in all the way. You have to have it just right. You have to have the counterweight set up right. If you don't have everything lined up just right along with the top, the start of that roller coaster track, it's not going to work. It's going to pull your riders up there. Then it's going to get stuck at the top and it's going to dump your riders off. It is a huge pain in the rear end to get this thing set up just the way it needs to be. I've had a bunch of times when I've had to just move things slightly, push this down a little bit tighter, pull that, you know, just to get it to go. But once you do and you set this thing up with a motor so that it can just run itself over and over, it is mesmerizing. It is completely satisfying. You set that thing up there. I would love to get a light kit for it eventually. I don't have mine built right now. It's put in storage. But once I have the space, I'd love to set it up with a whole light kit. I'd love to have a whole little theme park. But if you get this thing running and it's just looping on its own with the motor over and over and over again, you'll see why this is number one on my list for most satisfying Lego sets that I've ever built. Let me know what the most satisfying set you ever built was. Like and subscribe down below and we'll catch you in the next video.